Welcome to the Let's Talk BS Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm Sophia. And we're coming to you live from the... 757. What's it's going been, on? It's been too long. You forgot. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, it's been a minute. It has been a minute. I forgot the my whole setup. Yeah. It's sitting at home. I know, man. Got us yeah. on the struggle bus this morning. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we got things rolling and rocking the right way, you know? I know, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been, it's been a struggle. It's been yeah. a struggle. Yeah. I woke up, you know, super early this morning to get here, but I just didn't bring the belongings. I made it on time, though. Yeah. But my, my material didn't come with me. Yeah. It's still in bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we needed you here, so, I mean, you know, obviously the other things. Thank goodness like for we, the new studio. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Because so they have equipment in here that we just are utilizing, but you, typically we bring our own stuff. But exactly. But I completely forgot that this morning. Exactly. Yeah, it's been a day, and it's going to be a day for the rest of the day. Yeah. How's yeah. everything been going, though? How's everything been? Everything's good. Everything's good. Um, last night was my daughter's friend's birthday, so mm-hmm. we... Um, we're at their house doing like a birthday dinner mm-hmm. last night. And then when we got home, my, my daughter had a test today. So we studied till 1 a.m. Oh, wow. Okay. And then woke up at 5, 530 to be able to be here on time. So okay. let's just say part of my brain is gone. Oh, man. This morning. I got you. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, I know. I, I was, know. Um, like I said, we haven't had a podcast in what, about two weeks or so. Um, so how was like your Has Thanksgiving? It been two weeks? I uh, thought it's been like three, four weeks. Um, I feel like we recorded one before you went to Disney. No, nah, I feel like we recorded one not last week, but the week before, right? But it was uh, it just didn't um, cause yeah, you didn't you didn't know he put it out there and everything. Michael did. Oh okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I but um, the update. I got the alerts. I didn't see. Yeah, that. I think okay. Michael's doing a little bit different. He didn't uh, he didn't actually let us know. Oh, okay. um, he just did it. He, he put it out last Wednesday, right before the holiday. I don't oh, know nice. That. Yeah. Nice. But, um, but yeah, how, how was your Thanksgiving holiday? How was, I guess, the last two, three weeks? How's life? Yeah. No, <laughs> it was good. I had family come in town, um, and we celebrated. We went, we took pictures, um, we played games, we made treats. I mean, it was it was a really good time. That's good. Like, really, really good time. I think that everybody had fun, especially the kids. And then my oldest daughter, she, well, my my two oldest um, kids, they, they invited some of their friends over. So we were able to celebrate as a one big, happy, friendly family. That's good. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It's a nice Y'all time. eat all the food, all the food, I'm assuming, gone. Did y'all have to throw any out, or was, did y'all We take- threw out the dressing. And that was because everybody who ate, who eats dressing, they left. And so okay. I don't eat dressing. Um, my kids don't eat dressing. So all that went in trash. Okay. Um, i trying to think what else. We had a little bit of leftover, like potato salad. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's because I'm the only one in my house that eats fat. And then... Um, there was some, um, there was a little bit of ham, but not much. Mm-hmm. And that that was pretty much it. Oh, and my sister made a peach cobbler that nobody touched. So I threw that out. <laughs> peach cobbler? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big peach cobbler fan. I'm not a big I peach mean, fan. I, it's like, I know uh, I have to have like, Peach cobbler is one of them things where it's like I gotta really have a taste for it. Like, yeah. and, I, and I gotta have some ice cream with it too. I can't, I can't eat peach cobbler just by itself. I gotta have some type of ice cream, vanilla ice cream, preferably with it. So it's funny, so. funny story. My daughter was like, "I've never had pie before." So I was like, "What do you mean you never had pie?" She was like, "I've never had a pie, not a sweet potato pie, not an apple pie, not a nut." I was like, "What? Like, where have you been?" <laughs> Is that true? So, though? I mean, it's your daughter, so you would know. Like, has she never had pie in the house at all? Like apple pie. Nothing? When I when I reflected on it, I, I couldn't remember. Okay. I, I I don't know because I don't force them to eat sweets. So mm-hmm. unless she got up and got it herself, I mean, I didn't. I wouldn't know. You know what I mean? Okay. But. So then um, she was like, I want to bake an apple pie. I was like, hold up, wait. <laughs> Let's start with the um, already made one that you just put in the oven first to see yeah. if you like it. Mm-hmm. So we bought like this, I think it's called Maria's or oh, something yeah. like yeah, that. With, the, with, the, with, the, uh, with that crumble. The crumble, crumble yeah. yeah. So that we, one is actually pretty good. It is yeah, good, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I told her that. I was like, 
I'm not, you know, big on sweets, but that apple pie is good. So yeah, she baked it after Thanksgiving. Okay. And she enjoyed it. She was like, this is so good. Then I was eating sweet potato pie mm-hmm. with ice cream during the holiday. And she tried that for the first time. She was like, what have I been missing? Yeah. I was like, I, yeah. That's great. I think this is the um, first, well, no, I ain't say it's the first, but this is the first Thanksgiving in a while that I hadn't had. I didn't eat any sweet potato pie. Didn't what? Any. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't make any. We, we had. Uh, really? Yeah, we had donuts from Classic Donuts. I went and got some from there right before. Um, that's like a staple. Left. It is. It is. We had classic donuts. We had um, pecan pie. I didn't eat that, but... Um, that's an old school classic. Yeah, yeah. That's something that... Uh, my Brooke, mom used to eat that. Yeah, Brooke and my parents, they both love it. So they they were going to town on that. Um, and then what I like, which is something that my sister make, it's not like really a name for it, but it's like a Rice crispy. Um, so if, the way she has it is like it's Rice crispy and peanut butter kind of as the base. And then there's like chocolate over top of it. And it's, she used like a circle um, pan. And so we, you, it's, it's kind of a cold dish, you know what I'm saying? Like you heat it up, I mean, you, you cook it or whatever. You have the chocolate, it melted on top. And so it ends up being like a Rice crispy treat with like chocolate on top. Okay. And so um, my sister's made that man for the last, I would say at least six, seven years. Oh. Um, and so that was kind of like with those three desserts and, you know, we kind of just got that. We didn't even make the sweet potato pie this year, but it was really good. Like I said, I, um, my, uh, what I was going to say as far as for food for us, we ate pretty much everything. I don't think there was anything we had to really throw away. Um, we took some food home because what we ended up doing was we had, uh, we celebrated out in the Outer Banks at Outer Banks house. Um, so we, you know, cooked a lot, obviously with most of the food there. We got there the day before. Uh, prepped everything. Me and my dad did the um, the turkey, fried the turkey outside, which was really good. Um, and we had some ham. My dad ended up burning the ham, which was funny. Um, he ended up, we were outside doing things and he ended up forgetting to, you know, go check on it and then he burnt it. Um, and my mom, obviously, she made her potato salad, which is the uh, the classic of the family. And it was it was good. I killed that joint. Mm-hmm. Potato salad and ham, like, amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and we had sweet and salty. Yeah, yep. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we had a good time for Thanksgiving for myself as well and the family. I mean, we had a really good time. Kids, though, I would say over the last like week, week and a half since Thanksgiving, even right before Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. um, kids been kind of battling different illnesses, you know, sick. You know, my stomach had, my son had a stomach virus. Um, my daughter kind of had, I don't really know what she had per se, but she was just kind of. You not know, feeling. yeah, not feeling well as well at all. Um, because we went to Disney World like two, two, three weeks ago, and so by right before then, I was kind of nervous because my daughter wasn't feeling good. Um, but she ended up, you know, feeling, I guess, feeling good enough to, to go. And she had a, you know, got the kids and had a great time, so um, that was good. So, I mean, outside of that, I'm trying to think on a personal level, just uh, what Thanksgiving passed, we had um. Like I said, I went to Disney a couple weeks ago. I know you had your event, your Veterans Day event, right? I did. Yeah, how did that go? It went good. It went well? It okay. was nice. A lot of people uh, showed up. Um, we didn't really do, like, huge advertising just because that particular place is a veteran-owned coffee shop, so a lot of vets already support it. Yeah. So, basically, people who came in, we were able to say, hey, coffee's on us, you know? So, yeah. that was a good, good turnout. I think that... Um, the people really enjoyed themselves, and then we were able to kind of compete a little bit with Starbucks. <laughs> with Starbucks, yeah. Yeah, so they had, uh, it was free, gave away free coffee from the time they opened until 11. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's, so that's good. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I know I've helped participate with that with you before, and it's normally been a really good turnout, so that's pretty yeah. dope. That's pretty yeah. dope. Good to hear that. It was really nice. And then, um, oh my goodness, outside of that, I haven't been on any trips, really. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's it. I haven't done. How anything. did um? I know. I have a volleyball. Today. I'm about to say how did volleyball? Uh, I know you told me that finished up right for your daughter. How did that end up going? How did her season end up going? I mean, <laughs> they you know what that record the was? They have like a winning record at all, or was it? I don't even know the record. Know? Okay. Yeah, it wasn't on the good side. It was like mediocre. Okay. You know, it was like a five hundred. I, I don't remember, but yeah, 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 it wasn't all bad, yeah. but. She actually made an AAU team, um, but we weren't able to join that team because that practice time was like around 
it was like 6 or 6.15 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And just with the dynamic of the other kids and then my husband being gone out on the water. When he's here, it's fine. But when he's gone, there's no way that I'm going to be able to get get her to practice on time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you ain't at practice on time, you usually don't play. Yeah. So I'm not about to waste my time, my money. Yeah. (laughs) So she couldn't um, participate in that particular um, AAU group. Okay. Yeah. So, unfortunately, she's going to have to sit this season out. And maybe next year, once she gets a little bit closer to driving, then she'll be able to. Because she's, she's getting ready to turn 15. So, okay. this summer, she'll actually be able to get her permit. Okay. This upcoming summer. Okay. Because she'll be 15 in six months. That's crazy. Time is flying. That's crazy. <laughs> and then by mid-school year next year, she can, she'll be 16 and have her license. Okay. Yeah. That's yep. good. So, so you we pretty much got year. one more, yeah, if I say one more season of volleyball, because um, it would be, you said, like, yeah, cause high school, year. Yeah, because yeah. high school season starts at the beginning of the year. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, one more season, and I ain't got to take her to practice no more. You, you, you just don't know how exciting that is. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I see. I Man. remember, like, again, mm. I told you, I remember my mom. I cannot wait. The only worry that I have. Is that because she goes to high school out of our district? Yeah, it's a She has drive. to get, yeah, on that highway. Yeah. And that highway. Yeah, that's tough. But at the same time, I'm I'm assuming, but by then, all the lanes will be open and there will be no construction. Yeah, too. hopefully. So. I was in that, I was in know, that traffic yesterday. I was, I was coming home from out of town yesterday in the middle of the afternoon at 12, 31 o'clock, and I was in a lot of traffic. I'm like, yo, this is ridiculous. Like, yeah, me too. I was actually coming from my daughter's high school and I was stuck in the same traffic. Yeah, it's crazy. At like one. I was, I was, at, yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like one o'clock for me. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was like, I was like, what? This, this is too much, this yeah. traffic. But like I said, once that, tra- once they finish up with the construction, I think that it's going to be a smoother ride because now there's more lanes. Yeah. For them to work with. Yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't be hope too much so, backup. I hope so, man. I hope so. I mean, I feel like when they did it for Virginia Beach, like even going on like this morning, like when I come, I live in Chesapeake, so coming here to um, record this morning, mm-hmm. um, I had to take the kids to school, so hopping on the interstate. I typically don't take the interstate here, but when I take the kids to school, I do mm-hmm. on the way back. Yeah. Um, and so since they've widened 264 to get on to Virginia Beach, I mean, there's barely very rarely any traffic like as far as like backup traffic just trying to get on because I remember growing up my whole life was that one lane going on a 264 Virginia Beach yeah, um, and, and that, that, that was ridiculous yeah. I mean it was one lane everybody trying to get into Virginia Correct. Beach I now remember that, that. Got, yeah now that they got it was really like three lanes it's, they, it's two lanes to get on and then you, you can go in two different directions to merge into the rest of the traffic that's coming from Norfolk so um, yeah. yeah I mean I hopefully like you said hopefully with uh, the construction once it completes you know that will allow and the they, to they're open up that they're opening up the HOV lane too mm-hmm. going across the bridge so mm-hmm. those people who like to ride in the HOV they're yeah. not gonna even be yeah within in, that traffic yeah within that yeah. traffic so yeah it's a win-win for everybody so I'm hoping that construction is done and I don't have to have that worry but we're, we're working on driving. She she drove on Thanksgiving. Yeah, okay. With me, and she drove with my niece. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they let her drive. I was like, let, you letting her drive at your own risk. I hope you got Uh-oh. the money to pay if she crashed. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, but she actually drives pretty good, so I'm not really worried about it. She 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 really can drive. Do you have, what, do you have like a, a night, like a plan, I guess, with it being... I guess within about a year, like you said, coming around the corner, are you going to buy her a car or how, yeah. are you going to buy one for her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. I'm not going to um, allow her to drive my car. Okay. No way. Mm-mm. Yeah. Nah. Mm-mm. I don't want those, her, her and her friends in my car. Yeah. No, I understand that. Yeah. I remember um, when I was driving, like, you know, going into, the, you know, I was high school, same, same thing like you were saying. I remember my mom. She was very, she was very, just like how you said, she was encouraging me to be able to drive um, because she used to get tired of taking me to all the sports I was playing. I was playing football and basketball and track. And so literally 
every day. And then I have then she had my little sister, you know, so she no was break. Yeah, so she was going around and stuff. But you know, my dad was military, so a lot of that stuff was on her. Same old yeah. So it was just she um, she knows where yeah. where where you where it's coming from. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I remember right when I was able to drive, like literally the day she was like, All right, it's on you. You got it. You know. And That's I I drove my the truck that I had, I had a stick shift, which I kinda miss, man. I kinda miss driving the manual drive, you know. I thought it was like I just felt like I had more control. You know, I mean, shifting gears and traffic used to suck. I ain't gonna lie. Like, you know, going to school and sitting in that traffic to get into the school parking lot, you know, going, keep shifting from first, second gear, you know, shifting down. But um, the manual drive was pretty dope. It's pretty dope. I used to like that. Yeah, I never drove a stick shift. Yeah. Ever. Never, ever. Yeah. I mean, I guess technically, because I used to own a motorcycle, that's kind of like a stick shift. They say if you know how to ride a bike, you know how to drive a stick shift. Yeah. But I've never actually been behind the wheel of a stick shift car so. yeah yeah it's uh yeah. it's cool man i um i liked it i liked it uh i liked it a lot like i said at the time I, it was t- t- it took a lot to get used to you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying because the very very first vehicle i was driving obviously was automatic um which was my parents vehicle and then the, the truck that was are down cheaper to right me. yeah it's cheaper it's better on gas too it is gas. yeah mm-hmm. oh, really mm-hmm. did not know that that's yeah. that's a, um a new uh so learn something new there we go. every day. There we go. I did not know that. Shoot, you sure? Because my parents was cheap. I'm yeah. pretty sure they would have had a six shift. If, yeah. <laughs> if I mean, they, they may have, they may just didn't know. Money. Yeah, they may just didn't know. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but uh, stick shift is definitely better on gas. Um, you can Google it. Um, but my, I mean, it's, most people didn't. I don't think people necessarily buy it for that reason per se. Um, you know, just different vehicles come into, you know, come or made as stick. I believe, if I'm not mistaken too, I believe, now this, I don't know. I know they're, they're better on gas, but I do feel the manual drive was actually a little bit cheaper. Like if you had the exact same vehicle and it was a manual drive versus an automatic, I feel like it was a little bit cheaper as well. Yeah, the, I yeah. knew the price of the car was cheaper. Yeah. That I knew, but yeah. I didn't know that it made a difference in the gas. Yeah. Now, as far as how big of a difference, that I don't know. But I do know that because they said because of the clutch and because you're manually doing it and the vehicle is not having to do it itself, it like conserves energy because you're actually doing it versus the vehicle doing it itself and it is uh, better on gas. Yep, yeah. I'm going to Google that. Yep. <laughs> All right, what's going on in the real estate world? Um, a lot. A lot's been going on. You know, this time of year, um, a lot of times what happens is there's a lot of the changes that are being, uh, you know, introduced or, you know, put out there for the coming year. Um, so I know I saw, was it two days ago? I was just um, coming from out of town. Um, actually, shout out to North Carolina Tar Heels. Me and my son and my dad uh, went down and uh, watched the basketball game on Wednesday night was great had a good time it's a little um thing that we do every single year so we had a good time they brought the victory home um so that was really cool had a good time my son enjoyed himself like that was seeing him happy and him just loving that man was like everything for me like i want to see that every day so that was dope but um as far as real estate goes um i saw that uh fanny and freddie they upped their conforming loan limits yeah um so i did see that come out which was expected and good as well what i didn't see it, it go do you know what it is off the top i don't um i could look it up because it was it wasn't it 700 and something thousand yeah but i think uh i think it went just it went i know when i looked at it, it didn't go up that much okay. um that especially not as much as it did the year before because remember the year before that was when like things were crazy yeah like um because of the pandemic and everything you know and the, the houses appreciating at the uh amount that they are but yeah so the amount first Let's see for twenty twenty four. Okay, so like forty thousand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's seven hundred sixty six thousand five fifty. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. That is good. So just given, I guess, a little information about what that means is what that means is that if you're buying a home, um, and the loan amount is seven hundred sixty six thousand five fifty or less, that's considered a conforming loan, and that allows you to adhere to the conforming loan guidelines right and so the biggest one with that is that the down payment requirement so the down payment requirement um, would be only five percent for you as a purchase and this is strictly just for conventional loans right so it's for your Fannie Mae and your Freddie Mac loans and so what that means is you can buy 
You know, like out here in Hampton Roads, you can buy a nice sizable house, $800,000 home, which is a, you know, pretty big sizable house, depending on what city, you know, where you're located, um, and only have to put down 5%, Absolutely. right? So that just allows um, a lot more of the buying pool, maybe people who don't have enough money to put down 20%, um, but have the 5% and can qualify carrying a mortgage at that loan amount. It just allows you to be able to buy the house and put down, you know, as little as 5%. So that's huge. That's huge. That does, uh, I seen um, I got a couple of text messages and emails about it, just kind of asking questions from agents and other just buyers in general that were looking at buying in 2024. They were just asking like, well, hey, how did, what does that mean now? You know, um, so that's pretty cool. I'm excited. I'm excited for the, that news. So uh, let's let's jump right in to exercise your knowledge. So okay. just um, piggybacking off of what um, Brian just said, if you put down a 20 percent down payment, what portion of your monthly payment is removed? Okay. That's, That's a, a good, good question. One. Yeah. That's a good one. Good, I like great, that one. Great piggyback. We'll yeah. come back to the answer later on in the segment. Yeah. So in, in addition to the conventional loan increases, I mean, it's always been um, normal for VA to kind of like follow suit. Mm -hmm. So we should potentially see an increase in the VA county loan limit as well. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, the biggest news that I saw that kind of like made me pucker up a little bit was the VHDA mm -hmm. increases. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. VHDA has finally increased <laughs> mm -hmm. their income limit <laughs> mm -hmm. for 2023. Um, when I first came over to Atlantic Bay, I had never really heard of VHDA because the previous lender that I was with, they had in-house 100% financing options. Now, with those particular options, they hiked the rate up way higher than, you know, your normal loan where there was a down payment. So when I came over here, you saw that, hey, Virginia Housing offers 100%, plus they allow you to still have the same, almost the same rate as your normal products. It's not too high. It's not ridiculously high, right? Mm -hmm. So... The um the, one of the things that kind of like upset me a little bit was the income limits, and I was like, oh man, these are kind of low mm -hmm. for the cost of living that we have today. But whew, they have opened up those <laughs> floodgates. Now we got a little bit Not of the floodgates. Yes, <laughs> yes. So now we got a little bit more wiggle room. First, okay. it was the DTI increase. We went up to forty from forty five percent up to fifty percent. Yeah. Now the income limits are higher, and then on top of that, they have some non bond um, products. Yeah. So we don't have the full details as to what that consists of yet. Um, it, everything doesn't go into effect until December fifteenth. So we still have time to dig in and kind of get the information so we can be able to explain it to our clients but that's exciting news yeah it is exciting it's really I saw exciting it, uh, I sent it to you yeah you did yeah <laughs> I saw it was it Tuesday I think it was right yeah Tuesday or Wednesday yeah, yeah it, was it was this week. week it was a couple well yeah, yeah it was when Wednesday, you were gone. gone yeah it was Wednesday yeah. so it was Wednesday yeah yeah so. as soon as I saw it I was like soup sin <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I'm gonna definitely dive into you know some of the different particulars and there yeah. um, I'm even hearing that you could potentially not be a first time home buyer and still take advantage of, you know, like the down payment assistance. Now, don't know that to be true 100 percent yet, but that is what I'm well, hearing. You do um, know that with Virginia housing, if you buy in what they consider a target area, you don't have to be a oh, first time yeah. home buyer as well. Yeah, so, yeah, I know that. I, mean, that I, I guess I'm yeah. talking about they said like at least the information that because I mean, like these like. What happens is I've been uh, in Sophia's as well. We're in like these like group texts with other people that are within the business. So a lot of times when something new comes out or just ideas being shared, best practices or whatnot, you know, we'll text about it. And so um, with me being out of town or, you know, halfway through this week, I wasn't uh, fully engaged when it comes to some of the things that were happening and things that were going on new. Um, so I did see. Um, in the group text and talking about it, not necessarily having to be a first time home buyer. And I, I didn't see them saying anything about the targeted area as well. I, th I think most folks know about that, but um, you know, so that's pretty cool. I mean, if it's, you don't have to necessarily be a first time home buyer at all, um, cause they already kind of give you wiggle room as far as what they designate as a first time home buyer. Um, you know, if you haven't owned a home that you've lived in in the last three years, 
then you are, you know, considered a first time home buyer. So now from what I'm understanding, they've actually opened it up a little, a little bit more to people who are um, even, you know, who've owned a home before, you know, so we'll, you know, that within that three year window. So we'll see though. Let me just double check. I'll, uh, by next week's podcast, I'll, uh, I'll we'll have more details. Yeah, we'll have more details on yeah. it and clarify. Um, but it's exciting. Like you said, I mean, I know we typically deal with a lot of first time home buyers. Um, you know, I got a couple oh, yeah. of them that I'm, I'm working with right now um, that, you know, I know that this information would be definitely something that they're going to be excited about um, and try to take advantage of. So I'm really, really excited to see, man. I, I kind of think about it, it's kind of, I don't know, I always look at, see, when, when new things come out, you know, I, I guess it's almost like playing devil's advocate in a sense. Like, I always look at, like, well, why, right? So I know that that's happening, right? So that's good. Good news. I'm excited, thrilled. Like Sophia said, yes, yes, right? But I'm like, dang, they really, like, really are trying to get any and everybody, you know, to be able to qualify and take advantage. So I'm like, what is that really saying? You know what I'm saying? Like on a bigger level. Because a lot of times we think micro versus the macro. So, you know, I don't know. I'm hoping that, um, you know, my, my, my thought process behind that is just as far as, you know, things have been slower because of rates and all that. So I'm hoping that, you know, things pick up a little bit when it comes to um, the activity. I've been seeing a little bit of uptick in the activity. Rates did drop um, from where they were about oh. two weeks ago. Um, Listen, I've been getting those text messages. Rates drop? Rates drop? Yeah. Does mm-hmm. rates go down? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, bro, from an 8% eight to a 7.75. No. Yeah. But yeah. seriously, though, it, rates have gone down. Um, we were seeing rates at like a 8%, 8.5. Yeah. yeah. Um, and right now, you could probably get a good rate of low sevens, high sixes, depending on what your credit score is. Yeah. So, yes, rates have gone down, but. They have not gone down to the point of you being able to refinance if you purchased within the last year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty I much. got um, <laughs> and it's, it's it's tough, man, because um, like I was having a conversation. This was actually while I was out of town. I was mm-hmm. having a conversation while I was in the hotel um, with a, a young lady who I got pre-approved about two, three weeks ago, and her goal was to try to buy something by the end of the year. Right, that was mm. her goal. She under contract. No, no, so oh. I'll get there. So what what <laughs> happened is uh, she found something that she really, really liked. Okay. Um, and we were kind of just going through the numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so there was two different new constructions that she was looking at. One was for 339900 mm-hmm. and the other one was right at $300,000. Um, they both were within the community, so there was like a $150 HOA for both of them. Okay. And um, I think the 339 one was just, you know, a little bit bigger. I think that one was right at like 1,800 square feet to 2,000 mm-hmm. square feet, if I'm not mistaken. And then the um, the 300,000 one was, I think, like 14 to 1,600 square feet. Um, so she was very excited. Um, she's single. It's just her. Um, so oh. she was leaning towards the, the 300,000 because she obviously knows it will be, you know, a lot more cost effective. So it was funny because she technically qualifi- qualifies for both of them, right? Yeah. And um, we were just going over the numbers, man, and – you know, I sent her everything she wanted to talk about it. We talked about it. And then she was like, hey, I want to sit and look at it. So I sent her the different cost and our, everything for it. And um, she just was like, Brian, I, can, I just can't do it. She was like, you know, one of those, um, the payment would, for the the 339 one was going to be right around 2800 bucks plus the $150 condo fee slur. So let's just say it's going to be 3000 total a month. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, $300,000 one was going to be right around like $2,600. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then like two, two, $2,750 with the condo fee. So she was just like, ah, like that would be basically one of my whole checks. You know what I'm saying? And uh, she still had other things that she pays for, you know, car payments, things of that nature. And so that's the, those are the buyers that right now – that normally in a normal market would have purchased, right? Wouldn't no no hesitation, no question. But you know those those buyers right now are on the fence because they're looking at how much they're maybe paying for rent or how much you know they're not paying for rent and then jumping out there and that payment shock. That's the key word that we always talk about is payment shock of like, man, I'm gonna have to pay that on top of you know all the different other things that I normally pay for. So um, you know, yeah. I just. It was a fresh conversation I had, and she, she really wants to buy it. And like, but I'll, I I never try to talk people into buying anything. I, I just kind of give them all the information and let them make that decision. But it's just one of the things where I, I know she really, really, really wants this home. That's a goal she said she had since the beginning of the year. Maybe but, maybe try to talk into her about the two on buy down. 
Um, well, she's gonna she's doing bond. She's doing uh, FH uh, VHDI. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's taking advantage of it because she's a first time home. That's what made me think about it because we were talking about VHDA. So yeah, mm-hmm. we can't do two on buy downs yeah. with uh, VHDA. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where it's like, ah, like she wants it. She probably she said she'd feel more comfortable around twenty two, twenty three hundred, and this is just gonna be, you know, about four to five hundred dollars more than what she feels comfortable with. So yeah. I'm like, ah, I understand. So. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. gotta make they they have to make that mortgage payment out of correct. Correct, and that's what I told her. I was like, hey, you ain't not is she good. renting or does she? Yeah, she's she's renting right now. I think okay. she's paying. Uh, she's in a one bedroom. She's paying like fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars a month for rent right now. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. chances are that rent's gonna go up. Yeah, yeah, and that's why she said. I mean, that was one of the reasons because she knows it's gonna go up at the beginning of the yeah. year. And uh, she just had a goal for herself, too, because she's now in her career. Yeah. You know, she's making good money. So she's like, hey, I really want to do it. But I ah, just that's just a little bit more than I can uh, I can bite off right now. So, yeah. You know. Oh, man. Well, hopefully she gets into something soon. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. what other updates did you see? I mean, I saw the update with the um, the tax brackets. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tax bracket. Yeah. Um, for 2022 tax year, filing in 2023 has changed, or it's gotten better. The tax yeah. bracket, the tax bracket is in favor of us, the consumer. Yeah. Um, and it's changing for 2023 tax year, filing in 2024. Correct. So that's good news. So I mean, when you look at it from the perspective of someone who really hasn't had a change in their income it's probably going to be somewhere around the same you're probably going to fall within that same tax bracket but for those individuals who um make more than what two hundred thousand, i think it is or yeah, so yeah i can't that's remember when exactly you really but it, see the difference yeah in there's different um tiers. you know different tiers yeah and depending upon what tier you fall under that tells you how much uh what you percentage taxed. of tax yeah, yeah what percentage taxes you're going to pay um and so yeah, they did make it um a little bit better for Depends folks that make a little bit more money yeah um because typically you know those are the folks that pay more taxes right Correct. um mm-hmm. so you know a lot of times there's a lot of pushback and that's really one of the sticking points when it comes to like a democratic Elections, yeah. yeah and republican parties is like you know taxes like you know republican party typically you know says hey you know you're penalizing me for you know you know doing mm-hmm. well we're in a, you know we're in a capitalism capital capital society mm-hmm. and the democrats you know typically want you know things to be more you know favorable for folks that don't make as much money so um yeah i mean i know that's gonna be something that's, that's a gonna be whole another topic yeah yeah i know that's gonna be something that's gonna be talked about i know we're entering an election an election, election year, year a um, new year yeah Hopefully yeah. this election year brings down interest rates. I mean, I'm for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> right there. Me too. <laughs> I don't me mind. Too. Bring me down too. the rates. <laughs> yeah, me too. I got uh, I got a couple of projects that I'm doing right now um, on the personal side, new construction. That I got one that's listed right now that I've gotten very very little activity on it, and I know I kind of knew it was going to happen, but you know, obviously I'm always optimistic about you know my endeavors, um, but. I'm going to probably have to end up uh, reducing the price. I'm thinking about it this weekend, to be honest with you, okay. um, just because of the little activity I've had on it. I actually stopped by yesterday when I was on the way home from out of town because it's kind of on the way a little bit. Um, but it's looking good. It's looking really, really good. I mean, it'll be done here in about two weeks. They're getting ready to pour the driveway um, and kind of finish up with uh, some tiling and things in the uh, in the bathrooms throughout the house. It's a punch list thing. So I'm excited about it, but we'll see. Hopefully I can get a buyer in there you know, before the end of the year. That'll be... Um, That'll be a, a great Christmas for me. You know, I know it's, Christmas is all about the kids, but hey, look, I, I could be a big kid if uh, if I get that house uh, sold by the end of the year. So that'd be that'd be what I'm looking for. That's the icing come on, on the Santa. cake. Come That's on, the Santa. bow. <laughs> yeah, come on, Santa. Put your so boy then up. that means that if somebody buy it before uh, the new year, you gotta you gotta paper wrap the door and put a bow. There on we it. go. Hey, I, I, look, I, whatever you want to do, if that's what I gotta do. I go do that today. What you want me to do? We can paper wrap the, the I bow see that on online, it. and I'm yeah. like, that's so cute. Yeah. I wish I like if I was an agent, I would definitely do that. So my boy, I got a good buddy of mine. Shout out to my boy Jerome. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember he, I helped him buy his uh, first house. Him and his wife probably. Uh-huh. This is back when I was at Wells, so this was probably like eight, nine years ago, I want to say, and that's what his agent did, which yeah. I thought was pretty dope. They uh, and we all took a picture 
in front of the in front the of the house. Yeah. yeah. The door, you know what I mean? That's so, so that cute. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah, when people get the too. houses. Mm-hmm. I mean the cars, and yeah. then whoever buys the car puts the bow on top. I think yeah. that's so cute. Yeah, my dad actually did that for my mom. Uh-huh. I remember that was funny. Uh, Christmas, um, this was shoot the house we were living in. So this was probably like six, seven years ago. I'm gonna okay. say. And um, my dad, um, he was like, hey, he, he told me with the it was like a little plan. He's like, hey, I'm gonna you know surprise your mom. She's been talking about getting a new car and all that, so I'm gonna hook her up. I was like, cool. And so what he did was he bought it probably like two, three weeks before Christmas, and he had it like stored in my garage. And so um, it was funny because he was trying to find a bow. And I remember he was sending me like different pictures of bows. He was like, is this big enough? Is this big enough? He was like, the car's at your house. He's like, can I come by there and just like put it on there to see if it like, if it looks good? I'm like, dad, man, you, you do it a lot. But I'm like, all right, you can, you can do it or whatever. And so I just remember... That Christmas, like, you know, my mom, you know, everybody came over to the house and, um, and like, I had to, like, I had to kind of, like, deflect. So everybody was in the house. I got the, got in the car and I backed it out of the garage and it put it on the curb in front of the house, our, you know, our house. And uh, my dad was like, surprise. My mom was, like, so shocked. Like, she was just, like, stuck. It was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and cute. she kept the bow and everything. Like, they kept the bow. Yeah. And all that stuff. yeah. That's yeah. A, bow, a bow for life. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're going to have to use that uh, bow for Brooke one day. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. So, I'm going to circle back to the exercise and knowledge question because yeah. we have to go soon i have to i have a closing today um shout out to the so, closing yeah i'm excited top of the top of yeah, december 1st top december of the month December first. Yeah. yes 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 I, I was supposed to have a closing yesterday but that one got delayed yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um so in within this podcast we ask a mortgage related question and we give you time to think about it and we reveal the answer later on in the segment so today's exercise your knowledge question was um when you put down 20 percent what is removed from your monthly payment so drum roll so the answer to that is mortgage insurance yes mi yes. pmi Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. All of the above. Yes, yep. it's removed from your monthly payment, so you save money. So the benefit of putting down twenty percent is the mortgage company will remove mortgage insurance. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so that's always like the the trade off, right? Yeah. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, you know, with the conforming loan limits being increased, you know, it does give you the ability to put down as little as five percent. But just like with anything, it comes with a cost. So if you put down five percent. Mm-hmm. That private mortgage insurance or mortgage insurance that you pay monthly that's within your your mortgage payment is going to be on the higher end, yeah. right? And then as more money you put down, so, you know, 5, 10, 15, and 20%, the mortgage insurance decreases all the way until once you get to 20%, you don't have it at all. So all right. that's the key. And mortgage insurance, it could add up. So sure in, this, in this environment where we already have higher interest rates, um, you know, mortgage insurance could really kind of put your payment out of reach. Yeah. So, um, you know, you always encourage, I always encourage folks that, you know, if you're buying a house, you have the funds to put enough money down to avoid mortgage insurance. Do I'm it. a proponent for that. Yeah. Um, how I look at it is like, hey, if you have the money in your bank account that's just sitting there, you might as well put it to the home because that's going to, it's going to increase there quicker than it is in your bank account. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you don't have any money to manage or anything like that. But if you have enough funds to contribute to avoid that mortgage insurance, it's a win-win. Your payment it will be less. It is. And like I said, that money will grow quicker over time. That's so, absolutely I mean, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So what you got coming up next? Um, What I got coming up? This weekend, I got really nothing. I got uh, my son. I forgot to mention I went to go see Wish. Oh, okay. That was so good, y'all. So, the, so that weekend, that Sunday after Thanksgiving, I took my kids to go see Wish. It's a good movie. We have another black Disney yeah. um, character, and this character got braids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. was like, okay, now. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I got to look at my phone, but I know um, I know when we went to Disney, we saw they had, like, you know how you can, like, meet the characters at Correct. Disney? Mm-hmm. And so um, it was funny, like, one of Sloan, my daughter, one of her uh, favorite, like, characters is Doc McStuffins. Okay. And so it was funny. We met Doc McStuffins and Slow was just like, at first she was like shook. She was terrified. She was like, oh my God, like that's like the real thing. So she was like stuck. 
And then finally, like, I went over to Doc, because she didn't want to, like, go over to her. I went over to her, and I was, like, talking to her. I'm like, look, she's friendly, you know? And so she came over and, um, you know, started talking to her, and we took, like, a whole bunch of pictures with her. And she also met Princess Tiana, which is another, you know, black, um, Disney you know, Disney history, character, yeah. you know? So that was really, really cool. She almost started crying on that one. I was, like, heart really? strings. Oh, yeah, heart strings a million. Oh, guys. Yeah, yeah, she loved that. Um, but, yeah, so, but what I just want to say is that the I, the the wish girl that you're talking about in the new movie. She was there. Yeah, she was there. They had like a little um, picture thing. It was funny because Niall thought she was cute. So Niall was like trying to take pictures with her too. <laughs> and we took some pictures. Like we did like the whole like, because you can get like a wristband and like basically, which is pretty cool. It's pretty s- smart by Disney's where like you can get a wristband and you can throughout the whole part, you have different photographers that are just randomly taking pictures. So you can go up to them and say, hey, take a picture with me doing this, whatever. And everything goes to your wristband. So at the end of your stay or at the end of your trip, you can buy all those pictures instead of like always having to do it with your phone. I said, hey, have somebody do this. Like they got photographers literally at every corner throughout all the parks there. So it's pretty cool. So okay. we were able to, you know, capture all those moments and not really have to like be held up. I mean, it kind of was able to move around or whatever. But uh, but that was cool. How was the movie though? Was it pretty good? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, we got to check that out too. I'm going to try to good. do that maybe during Disney. Or not, I mean, during our Christmas holiday. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 But this weekend, I, I don't have much. I got. Um, my son, he has two uh, concerts that he's singing in. Um, on Sunday, he's doing a recital, a school recital that he always does. And then um, Monday, he's doing, um, he's uh, he plays the piano. So he's going to this uh, shelter and playing, like, I guess it's him and I don't know if it's, like, other kids or whoever. But um, I know he's going to be playing, um, you know, the piano there. You know, so that's pretty cool. He's excited about that. They asked him to, to do that personally, I guess, because he's doing very well in the class um, that he takes. So he's excited about that. We were talking about that on the ride this morning to school. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Then my mo- my birthday's Monday, so I'm excited about that. You know, I turned a big 37, you know what I mean? So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to go out. I think we're probably going out to d- dinner probably on that, that night. Okay. So, yeah, so that's okay. pretty cool. Well, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I thought you was going to say you was about to be 40. <laughs> nah, don't try to carry me like that. I'm 37. You be 37 soon, though. You laugh, look, you laugh kind of hard. You not. older to be. Don't go there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, just, but, like, how? when your birthday? July, right? Yeah, so that's not. It'll be like six months. I am 21 years old. Okay. I don't know what he's talking about. Right, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I have, don't have a All clue. Right. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. They don't believe that. What? They believe me. Okay. They know. Well, the women know. I don't know about the men. Okay. Y'all delusional sometimes. Okay. <laughs> hey, I, I pick and choose my battles. I'm going to hey. let you get yours off right now. Thank you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, we typically like to um, leave you guys on a good note, but we don't have a... Do you have a quote to give the people? Mm-hmm. You and this email... You're not, you're not quoting it up? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, based on the past two weeks, I would say my takeaway is, what is it? Do unto others as you, said you what? wish for them to do unto you. That's my takeaway. That's your take. That's like your, your, your quote. You're saying your quote. Your takeaway. Okay. All right. Do unto others as the as you want them to do unto you. Yes. Is that is that how it go? I, it's so uh, close sound, to that. Yeah. Am I, mean, I, I may right? Have some I'm words. almost right. I yeah. put a little. Probably put a couple more words in there, yeah. but you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not 100 percent certain by it sounds. I, I know. I know what you're trying to say. Right. Well, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's all the time that we have today. You can follow me on social media, SKB underscore mortgage, both on Instagram and Facebook. Yep, and I'm Brian Royster, so it's Brian underscore Royster. All right, that's all the time we have for today, folks. We will see you next week.